What's going on guys? Last video we discussed grip and we discussed the two factors that determine if we can hit our target or not, being side alignment on target and the trigger manipulation. This video we're going to discuss trigger manipulation. Trigger manipulation is the number one cause for missed rounds and until you learn how to manipulate the trigger properly, you're going to continue to see some serious issues in your shooting platform. It's pretty simple and I'm actually going to start off with finger placement if I can find a marker here. Ideally the center of the trigger should ride in the center of this first pad here. Okay. Depending on the gun type, size, the size of your hands, it could vary a little bit in or out, but we want to try to center it as much as possible. Okay. If you'll come a little closer here, what you'll notice is every gun has what's called trigger slack. From the time my finger touches a trigger until I can start pulling it, and we hit this stopping point, some people like to refer to it as a wall, I'm going to refer to it as zero percent. Okay, So this is going to be slack position. 0% will be slacked out position, and 100% will be once the round or the trigger breaks over firing around, okay? Ideally, this is a position we want to fire from. It's not to say if I don't have, if I have the gun stabilized that I can't roll into it, hit that first wall or 0% and press the trigger properly. It's very possible, but we're going to be more efficient and faster pulling from 0% of that first wall. Most right-handed or right -handed shooters, what you'll notice is your rounds go between the 637 to 730-ish, all right? Basically what you're doing is imagine being at 0% and you're going to 100 instantly. You're jerking or pulsing the trigger, and we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to caress the trigger. Every trigger is different, so you're not going to be able to pull every trigger in the same manner. Some's going to require more finesse than others. Some, because they're lighter, you can press a lot faster and a lot harder. So again, 0% press. 0% press. Okay. So the next key in your trigger manipulation is once I release the trigger, what we often see in our classes is this. Students will release their finger off the trigger. You don't want to do that because what ends up happening when you're shooting fast, we release and we come in and we slap the trigger and the barrel and the round is going to go to the seven clock position roughly, okay? So I'll show you a drill here shortly, but the whole concept is 0%, 100 it cycles. Once I release, you hear a click or a pop, we're back to 0% or the trigger's reset, so there's no reason for me to come off the trigger anymore. It's very important that you build this muscle memory, and I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to give you a drill how, to, drill how to do that here shortly. All right. So just to give you an analogy, for those of you who have driven a clutch before, imagine the car being the gun, the trigger being the clutch. I'm going to give you some random numbers. Let's say we have the gas, the clutch in, the gas down, 10,000 RPMs. What happens if we just go from zero to 100% or dump the clutch? Well, the car is probably going to spin, get sideways. The great thing about driving a car is we can backpedal, let off the gas, hit the brake, and we can get straight again. The problem with the gun is the moment we pull the trigger and we disrupt that barrel, all right, from point A to point B, the round's gone, and you might as well go ahead and chalk it up as an innocent life loss. There's no way to correct it. So we don't have that luxury. So it's very important that you get really intimate with your trigger, okay? So just like a race car driver, they've got the right RPM, they have the right clutch dump, that's gonna get them off the line as fast as possible, as straight as possible, and that's what we're looking for. If you've never driven a car, let's use the analogy of picking up a child or a toddler. If I reach down under the armpits, do I go from zero to 100 really quick, jerking, giving them whiplash, or do I start applying pressure and roll into it? So the exact same concept. 
Another analogy is just like a handshake. Do I come in and grab the hand really hard and try to crush it, or do I go to 0% and apply pressure? Okay, so those are a couple analogies for you to use. In this drill, we're gonna do exactly what we did a second ago. I'm not going to let the trigger go. I'm going to hold it to the rear after I fire it. Take one shot. I still have the trigger depressed. Now I'm going to slowly release the trigger until I feel that click or hear that pop. Stop. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and roll into the trigger. Still to press the trigger, go ahead and slowly release, click or pop, stop, take your shot, release, it's not about round count, it's about how you use those rounds. Every gun has what's called a maximum effective pull rate, that means at some point the speed that I manipulate the trigger is going to eventually start disrupting the barrel. So I'm going to give you some random numbers. Let's say I have 10 pounds of pressure with my left hand, 10 pounds of pressure with my right, giving me a total of 20 pounds. 20 pounds allows me to pull the trigger 5 mile per hour without any disruption in the barrel. So what that means is it doesn't matter if I'm 3 yards away or 50 yards away, I don't have to manipulate the trigger any faster or any slower. And that's something you really want to find um, on your platform is that maximum effective pull rate. So quick question, if I remove one hand, 10 pounds, which leaves 10 pounds, right, how fast could I technically pull the trigger? 2.5 pound or 2.5 mile per hour, right? So to prove this point, I believe we're at the 10 yard line. I'm gonna take a shot or two. And again, random number. I'm gonna say that I pulled that trigger five miles per hour. Let's head this way. Now we're at 20 yards. I'm not gonna manipulate the trigger any slower because of the distance increase. The only thing that changes here is the oscillation my frequency, meaning how much I shake. As we move backwards, the trajectory gets greater, so your overall grouping size is gonna change. Right. Let's go down here and check how we did. So six rounds total. That was the second two. The last two's in here and the first two are in here. So. Point proven, if you find a, a maximum effective pull rate of your gun, you don't have to manipulate the trigger any slower or any faster. And the more consistent we are with that trigger pull overall, the better off you're gonna be in a defensive situation. Here's a really good drill. You can do it with rounds or dry. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at 0%. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count to 100%, but I'm gonna go by 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And as I count, I'm going to try and match those numbers in my trigger pull. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. All right, so if your trigger goes off before you hit 100%, that's fine. It just means that you don't have the length of the trigger pull figured out just yet. What you don't want is to get to 80, 90, 100, because that's called timing and you're gonna end up jerking the trigger. The concept is as you start counting, I'm pressing into the trigger. We can use higher numbers, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. The numbers are irre irrelevant. The concept is once we start counting, we just start squeezing the trigger until the round breaks over. The only reason we stop pulling the trigger is for a safety issue or the threat no longer is present. So let me give you guys one more tip and we'll get you out of here. Like we discussed in the last video, one of the things you want to do when you're learning something new is classify it as a skills drill. Instead of trying to apply it in training, you have to build those skills before you move forward in advanced training. So at the three yard line, we're just gonna do what's called a one round drill. I'm gonna come up on target, follow the principles, pull the trigger straight back, slack out, roll into the trigger. 
key point here, reholster, no matter if you hit where you're aiming or not, reholster, okay? This is gonna get you into the mindset of this is not a round count drill. Relax, repeat. Reholster. We've got two rounds pretty much in the same hole at the anywhere five yard line, something like that. And this is what we're looking for, okay? Mastery of the fundamentals is all this is. And it doesn't matter how good you are, you're never going to be able to run and gun unless you can master your trigger. You guys have a great night and God bless.